Privet moi abritia i sensitivity is Ordinio. And welcome back to the order, guys. And today, y'all, we are talking about this. Now, I apologize to any of my Russian viewers. I'm not that good with Slavic because of my uh, mostly German and Scandinavian origin and Celtic origin. So, yeah, it's a little pain, but you get my point. And today, y'all, we are going to be reviewing this historical helmet from of the historical Russian boyer helm, and it's such as from allbestup.com. Now, uh, all this stuff makes around, I want to say, three to four of these, so depending on which one you want. So, yeah. Now, uh, you, it's pretty much of nine by nine, meaning it's fully circular, and in such, it comes in the historical 18 gauge steel, as most time it was actually stated to have been uh, made in. Now, the pricing is around, I want to say, 73 uh, dollars, or in this case, uh, seventy-four dollars, and in such, it would be a little, pretty much a good price. Now, this is pretty much one of the only few models I thought would look cool with it, and as well, uh, in this type of design of helmet, you can actually decide if you want to have Aventail attachment, which I did for this design. And as well, with this also, you can even have, if you want, a, well, arming cap if you want. Now, this is actually really cool, and I decided to get this because, well, we're probably going to be talking about the Kievan Rus soon, and as well, trying to do a how-to video on their type of history and origin and such, and I don't know why, I just like this helmet. This is sort of screams step people, like, because technically it kind of is. And in such, it originated from this spectacle helm, which, let me get this, let me show you all, this is really cool of how it somewhat evolved from the historical helm like this, which, and then turned into this. So it's kind of cool on how it originated from this one to this one. And it's such, it kind of does still somewhat look at like it. However, when the uh, people of Russia, or in this case, the Kievan Rus, transformed from pagans to, well, Christians, they would technically use this, and in such, it's actually stated that the Kievan Rus, who which later become also known as the Varangian Guard, down in the Byzantine Empire, would have actually worn most of these time of helmets during the early years. So, yeah, they would have worn something like this when it came down to it. And all this stuff did a very great job. They did perfect decoration for the said helmet, they did the historical uh, weird protrusion, and now many of you might wonder why did they do this? Kind of obvious to cause a deflecting type blow. Also, another was sometimes there was an attachment of horse hair. We don't know why, but yeah. Uh, major drawbacks though was the fact when it came to shipment. I think shipment might have messed up on this, because man, this thing looks like it went for a, just like a powder keg of dust. And even though that happened, I still have to say it's pretty great. Now, maybe you might wonder to mark how good is this helmet? Would it work for, uh, well, said, <laughs> the Kievan Rus reenactments? Well, pretty much. And as well, it can actually work for anyone that's into Viking reenactments. Now, upon wearing this uh, helmet, let me just try and put this back on. Oy. While wearing this, I can actually have this perfect feel of it. Now, I got these eyebrow-like designs, this nose protrusion that protects, well, pretty much most of my face, as well the aventail that protects my neck and slightly my shoulders. So, in such, this is historical to what it would have might have looked like. And you gotta admit, it's pretty cool. Now, while wearing this, it's slightly small for my head. However, uh, I think I might need to put some little more uh, padding in. So, uh, still though, it's pretty perfect to what it would have looked like. It's a strong, yes. Is it perfect enough? Maybe. But you gotta admit, 
this design of helmet is perfect for anyone that's into uh, Viking design culture in the Russian lands. That's right. Uh, Russians are technically uh, Vikings. It's kind of confusing, I know. So, yeah. In fact, pretty much anyone who actually uh, tries testing their DNA can actually find out their ancestral goals, uh, their own type of ancestors were uh, Germanic, uh, Slavic, or Scandinavian, Celtic, and so on, and so on, and so on. So it's kind of confusing, I know. But that's how it is. Now, many times over though, these helmets evolved in a type of certain way, so that way they could pretty much work. And the reason is probably because of the fact some of these uh, type of helmets were known to have actually donned a cross design or, or a cross guard design. Kind of like on my other Viking helms that which have the eyebrow system. Now, we can actually don't see the eyebrows on this, but you could see why they would put that design on there. And entirely, it would slowly dissolve over time. Uh, now, though, I do want to put this out here. Uh, most of the time, this would not just be used by the Rus, it would also be used by other steppe people. Sometimes it's stated that even the Cumans, or if none of y'all know what Cumans are, they are a type of steppe people in the region of, uh, I want to say, uh, southern Russia and such. And in such, the steppe people of that region had actually started to move further westward. And pretty much we could also see Hungarians somehow using this, and as well, the most of Eastern Europeans, such as even the Polish. So, technically, this helmet was used a lot of varieties of groups. Now, I decided to get it in this design of Aventail. Uh, you can choose out of, I want to say, like, two gauges of steel, but as well, choose of what you want it as. I chose it with a blackened color male. I don't know why. It's blackened male. This looks somewhat cool with the plate like this. I don't know why. I don't know why. But you see my point. But so if any of y'all are into this, hell, I would actually advise y'all to check out all this stuff.com. If any of my Russian viewers see this, I as well, I state again, I deeply apologize that I did not speak correctly on the, uh, type of channel. Well, for the opening. And in such, it was supposed to be a little bit bigger, but I'm not good with Slavic language for major reasons, because I can never speak the language without my tongue feeling like it's about to give a hernia. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, if any of y'all are actually into Viking reenactments or such, which they did wear these, they would have used them and such like that. So, if any of y'all, especially in Russia or as well parts of uh, Eastern Europe, such as Ukraine or as well Poland, uh, Estonia and such, and here's the thing, just go to all this stuff.com. I will leave a link down below in the description if any of y'all want any one of these helmets. Now, they have, as I said, three or four last time I checked. I just went with this one. It was a little bit cheaper compared to the others. But as well, I've seen that they're actually adding newer designs. And as well, one also has an eyebrow design. So check them out if any of y'all want to get your hands on these. Anyways, this has been Templar. Have a great day, and hope to see y'all in the next one. Mm -hmm.